Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. Good morning. How Good are evening. we doing? How are we feeling? Oof. Gemini season is here. Feeling good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to what's to come. We've had some like lots of cool crypto news. And um I kind of love that we we did find that local bottom as per usual around the the full moon, the Saggy full moon. We had a bit of a move up and then it's kind of just chilling up and down a little bit and um but we kind of dumped into that full moon which was great and um yeah. you know, as we've talked about previously on the podcast like this is not a time to sort of freak out about down moves it's to get excited and go okay what am I buying like what am I looking at especially some of these altcoins like I'm particularly looking at the AI narratives within altcoins deep in narratives mm -hmm. those kind of things so I think that they will really sort of fly when we move into yeah. alt season and so that's kind of been my focus and just picking up those bargains because when bitcoin pulls back a tiny bit the altcoins just bleed and so there's some projects that like i was looking at previously that i was like they've already run i'm not interested i'm not paying that price and then um you know just put in some random limit orders and wake up the next morning after the full moon. I'm like, oh, nice. Um, them up. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's really like looking at these times um, when we could have a possible pullback, not to short the market, um, but more to be like, okay, where's my next buy zone? So that's, um, yeah, that's what yeah. I think. What about yeah, you guys? I definitely feel that. I'm I mean, we had we had really positive moves with the Venus Uranus conjunction and the Jupiter Sun conjunction, as we called on that last episode. So that was really awesome to see. Um, and yeah, usual full moon things. I agree. I think that it really is just looking at times now where we can continue to uh, get those opportunities because I feel like we're just going to get less and less opportunities as we uh, adopt and expand. And I know we're going to touch on some topics there today and maybe what's happening in, in the world. And all of a sudden, everyone's jumping onto the Bitcoin and crypto wagon, aren't they? So I feel like we're going to get less and less opportunities to really find um, the kind of opportunities that we're getting right now. Like it or it seems wild that like, you know, a $60,000 Bitcoin is the norm now when yeah. not that long ago, if you really think about it, it was like, wow, a 60, a $70,000 Bitcoin. I mean, even Ethereum, Ethereum now having a $3,800, $4,000 Ethereum seems like, wow, when not too long ago, it was just at $1,500. Um, so things are moving fast. Mm -hmm. And I definitely feel like it's time more than ever to just be like focused here. Yeah. 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 I kind of had that with this new moon or this full moon, sorry, also. Like it was in my like Sagittarius. So I knew it was going to be a like heavy one. But I also wanted to make the most of that energy. So I really was like full wellness, spiritual materialist, girly. And, um, you know, had all of these, like, I had this chakra balancing mist that I was using. I started this new meditation practice with To Be Magnetic, which is really about getting to, like, your core, like, biggest block. And so that was really amazing. I also start, tried this thing that I've been meaning to try for a while called Blue Lotus. It's a Blue Lotus tincture. And it's like this meditation aid, but it's a little kind of, like, I guess lighter than like microdosing mushrooms, but it's like you use it in the same way. And so I found that like I had such a beautiful full moon um, because I kind of wanted to be like, you know, spotlight, shine on whatever you need to shine on. This is this is your moment, you know. And so, yeah, yeah that's really what I did over that period of time. And I loved it. So um, what about you, Andrew? How have things been going with you since we last saw you? Yeah, really good. The full moon was gorgeous. I had a cacao ceremony, set beautiful intentions. Mm -hmm. Jupiter and Venus at their last degree of Taurus. It just felt uh, too beautiful to ignore. And um, it's been, it's it's also just watching the how 
crypto the, the news, how Ethereum has just really taken over the news with the ETFs and the political news in the United States with so much of the um, candidates pandering to the crypto crowd, trying to get attention, just they'll do anything for votes. But the fact that they'll even talking to the Bitcoin and crypto community is um, speaks volumes to the power that um, that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We're going to have to do a Bitcoin Zodiac cacao ceremony, I think, a live Zoom, <laughs> right? I think we Agreed. need that. Let's do it at some uh, point. Yeah, I love, I, I love that. Mm. I can't Such wait. Such a good heart opener. Beautiful, beautiful. I've never done that before, so oh, it's going to be my first time. So beautiful. Yeah. So here's what it looks like. You you get your favorite crystals. You prepare cacao. First, you got to clean the whole space because you're setting a high frequency, setting intentions. Clean the space. Make sure the table's clear. You set music, meditate for a few minutes. You're not rushing through it. Mm. The preparation of cacao itself is so beautiful when you tune into it. So then I'll make it. I'll, I have my own little recipe. Um, I use ceremonial grade cacao. It's really delicious. And then um, I usually have my notebook and a chart open. And if it's a full moon, I'll phrase the questions to myself. What am I letting go of? And I'll look at where the full moon is placing in which house in my chart and where what aspects it's making. And if it's a new moon cacao ceremony, I'm, I'm very much looking at what am I starting? What can I have new intentions around? What am I going to create around? And then let the cacao do its magic. And then, you know, you're approaching everything from a heart based way where there's just a deeper layer of compassion, kindness, mm -hmm. love. You're not so much in here thinking, what do I got to do? What do I got to let go of? It's just like, ah, it's very, it's very, it's very beautiful. Yeah. I love that. That's like a, it's like a full body. Yes. Like that yeah. just sounds really, really beautiful. And I was just about to say, Claire, then I'm going to need your, uh, your little step-by-step -step that you just did with, uh, your, your full moon in Sagittarius. So I can prepare mm -hmm. For um, for your Leo, for Leo season, where yeah. we're coming, we're coming up. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But actually, my North Node's in Sagittarius, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I have found that during this time, or well, during this full moon, one, I was so exhausted. I've been sleeping silly amounts of hours, but I guess I just like needed it. But also, it's the first time in a very long time that I have a lot more clarity on like where I feel like I'm headed. Mm -hmm. And like, that's all that's been coming up in my journaling. And I was a little confused because I was like, but full moon's about releasing and letting go. But then I clicked and I was like, oh, my North Node's in Sagittarius. So this is probably where my, my pool is. I personally mm -hmm. am a Christian. So I've been reading a lot of like the Bible. I don't know. I've just like going into and I feel like that's very like Sagittarius as well like spirituality and faith and belief and it's been an interesting time a beautiful time yeah yeah love that, love that. it's a good one and you like your full moon doesn't yeah. have to be like bad and scary and like super emotional yeah. I was only kind of like emotional for like one day and you know if you also like prepare that's just being a woman yeah, exactly. And it also like lines up with my cycle. And I'm, you know what I mean? It's just like one of those things, but it's just like, you know what? It's actually really good to have a good cry, you know, like that's, you know, just on your own. Don't make it mean anything. Like don't over intellectualize because I think that's sort of a Sagittarius thing too. It's more Gemini, but it's like, a, I think Sagittarius can lean that way as well because we're very like into the philosophy of things and so we're always trying to philosophize our feelings and it's like yeah you you don't need to do that if you feel it just like you want to have a cry just let it out it doesn't have to mean anything so yeah so I love mm. <laughs> I love that I love that um well, yeah, shall we dive into what uh, this new moon in Gemini, because happy new moon in Gemini for everybody that's yeah. listening. Uh, also, let us know in the comments if you'd like a cacao, the Bitcoin zodiac ceremony, because I'm in. <laughs> but um, should we talk a little bit about the the new moon in, in Gemini? Yeah. Let's do it. Who would like to go? I mean, um, I oh. Go for it, Andrew. Go for it, 
<laughs> we're, th we're, th we're three fire signs, so just ready to go. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, I was just going to say it takes place in Bitcoin's 11th house, which is the 11th house is always the Aquarian house. It's associated with networks, power, wealth creation, hopes, dreams, aspirations. With the Gemini influence natively in Bitcoin's chart, it, it speaks to um, connections, widening networks. So everything that we're seeing from the politics of it to Bitcoin being in the news more to um, there's just like there's more going on with people. Gemini is always a human sign involves human communication, a lot more communication happening around Bitcoin, a lot more activity, heightened interest with the new moon also uh, conjunct is it Venus. Um, yeah, which is very benefic it's venus rules money itself rules attraction um so it it will de it definitely leads to a lot of chit chat a lot of communication and talking and um although it's questionable whether that uh how how well that will be perceived also because uh at the same time there's some there's some placements with saturn conjunct the bitcoin's natal uranus so there's 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 different movements happening with this new moon. Overall, I would say it's benefic in the long run. Although I don't know that it would have it had strong enough to say that there would be short term um, gains in June. It doesn't feel that way to me, but could be wrong. Um, what do you what do you both think? Well, I mean, yeah. from, from a perspective of like the the new moon really like I, I mean Gemini is such an interesting one it's like obviously it's my polar opposite sign um and they are interesting beings let me put it that way um but the new moon this Gemini new moon I feel like really does bring like excitement and an urge to explore sort of new experiences and new perspectives so it's really is a great time for social gatherings and sharing of ideas and connecting with us with others and so I think in that time like I think it's going to in terms of crypto I feel like it's going to get people talking there's going to be a lot of new people wanting to find new information and talk as you said Andrew talking about crypto whether that leads to like huge you know new all-time highs or anything like that not necessarily seeing that but I think it's going to be back on people's conversation list where it's sort of been the last couple of years it's sort of been off the conversation <laughs> um unless people are wanting to like make a dig at you um and so like even even with you know bitcoin creating new all-time highs i don't feel like we've got that frenetic chit chat and news coverage about it so now with all of these politicians coming in and talking a lot about it with a lot of interest like from this gemini new moon like these new people looking to explore new things and being excited about something new i think we're going to kind of see see that um so of course new moon opportunities set intentions from a fresh perspective so it's you know again breaking free of those past patterns and limiting imagination and so like again gemini to me is very head energy um you know, ruled by Mercury. So it's very in your head energy. So it's like takes a conscious sort of decision to be in your head, but also like drop down into that heart space. Um, that's kind of, for me, someone who's naturally more in my head than anything than in my body. It's like that conscious decision to drop down into my heart space and into my body. And so I think that that is something that we need to be aware of this Gemini new moon. There's a lot of like high mental activity, which can lead to like restlessness and impatience. So you really need to be conscious of grounding yourself. And mm -hmm. I say this on repeat because it's just my oh, own mantra to myself. Get out of my head, get into my body. And, um, you know, this Gemini new moon is really important for that. So it can cause overthinking and avoidance of feelings. Um, so you want to aim for some balance in acknowledging your feelings and things like that as well, rather than just the the mental overthinking. Um, but yeah, as you said, new moon conjunct Venus and Gemini encourages like deeper heart communication. So it's calling us to that. Like the astrology is calling us to like get out of our head and into our heart. 
and you know express love to yourself and others so let your heart be guiding the intentions that you set so maybe doing a ceremony mm. cacao ceremony with something heart opening like andrew's cacao or my blue lotus tincture you know anything that's just going to get you in that space that gives you that ah uh, that ease that opening you'll know it when you feel it for sure um and the sun moon and venus square saturn in pisces is sort of like challenging those commitments so reevaluating commitments to ensure that they serve your highest vision so allow for shifts that really align with your future growth so again getting into that heart space and allowing the shifts the intentions that you're setting and the shifts to, to align to, to that highest future growth, really. So again, focus on intuition, um, learn about your deepest desires and set intentions accordingly, follow intuitive hits without overthinking. So that's really the message of this new moon is going to, that's going to be the challenge of this new moon is really kind of leaning into that heart coherence, and um, following the, that intuition without like overthinking, overanalyzing and talking yourself mm. out of it, basically. So emphasizing feeling, being and receiving um, to really ground energy and just manage, like channel that beautiful Gemini energy in, for your highest good, which is always our goal. I love it. <laughs> love that. I love it. Yeah. And I feel like if, and I mean, we're recording today on May 27th. Um, and I do feel like, ha as you had mentioned last episode, Claire, with the Venus Kasimi on the 4th of June, if that doesn't take us to all time highs, uh, I do agree with you that I don't think that this new moon actually gives us enough power to create an all time high. Um, so if we haven't achieved it I do feel like this is and maybe the best word I would use for this that I feel into all the various aspects that are occurring is like a transformative period kind of adding to what you were saying Andrew it's like you know it's going to create something good for the longevity of Bitcoin and here we're talking about Bitcoin specifically but it's not going to come easy I do feel like there are going to be some ups and downs like I just don't expect like smooth sailing up from here um I do see quite a few challenges with like Venus square Jupiter Mars square Jupiter and they're kind of calling that to I, I would call it like a cautious optimism. Like, let's be cautious around this time, but also we are looking at long-term optimism. So, and mm -hmm. I feel like this really sets the, the theme from this new moon to the full moon in Capricorn, which is going to be on the 21st of June, where it's just setting this, uh, like we were talking at the start, maybe we might see a few more pullbacks here. I don't feel like it's any anything significant, but to position ourselves then for that that longer term positivity that's yeah. that's to come. Um, with the new moon happening specifically in the eleventh house, yes, about those collaborations and networks and everybody kind of coming together and also that long term goals. Um, and for financial astrology specifically, the 11th house is also associated to central banks, board of directors, people of authority. So with that Gemini energy, like I'm like, what news is going to come out this time around? Because I, I think it's going to be a very chaotic, like just a lot of like, just a lot of news coming out. Um, I mean, if we look at like the, even just the red folders that are coming up, whether you use Forex factory or um, the, what's it called, uh, the crypto craft, uh, you can see that there are just so many like red calendar, uh, red, uh, red folders coming up. So I feel like there is just going to be a lot of news that's going to play with people's emotions. Um, and another key one, I mean, as per usual, we'll drop all of the various transits that we see during this time in the notes of this episode or down in the, the comments section of the YouTube but one that I found interesting is that during this new moon, Saturn moves into Bitcoin's natal ninth house, and that mm. governs uh, international matters, higher education, legal systems. So I feel like this is going to be a continued focus on regulatory 
issues yeah. or progressions, but maybe also then from a positive side, because I feel like there's a little bit of like, oh, no regulation. Like I actually think regulation can be really amazing for crypto and it'll allow the the ex expansion and the adoption of uh, first Bitcoin is always like the first one and then everything else comes. Um but yeah, like just international or worldwide acceptance of Bitcoin and then later on, um, hopefully more cryptos to follow. So I feel like that was another really important one through this this new moon because uh, Saturn will spend a little bit of time in that natal ninth house for Bitcoin. And oh, I have um, something to say on that. I just wanted yeah, to share. Yeah, do. Absolutely. The ninth house rules foreign countries. And with when El Salvador took on Bitcoin, you know, I think like now they're in the limelight, but back then when Bitcoin was at 15, 20,000, it looked like a foolish endeavor, but they kept going on it and they're mining Bitcoin out of volcano energy and all this. Yeah. But I do think that we could see other countries coming on, adopting Bitcoin in a wider capacity. So it may not necessarily mean cool. regulation. It might actually just mean foreign adoption um, with Saturn on Uranus in such a strong way. And then the Saturn conjunct Uranus uh, and Bitcoin's ninth house could also lead to foreign countries um, adopting Bitcoin, such as the way El Salvador did. The ninth house is traditionally rules foreign countries. And um, so Saturn being, you know, a, a sense of regulation, but also law. Um, and then in coming into Bitcoin's own ninth house of Uranus energy, which is all this electric, anything's possible with Pisces uh, ninth house. Um, and then it recently it was also in the news that Argentina uh, was in talks with El Salvador about how do they go about introducing Bitcoin in a wider capacity within their uh, fiscal and financial policies. So, and then I looked up and I saw that Argentina itself as a country has, it, I think it's natal sun at three degrees Gemini, which also speaks to this communications and ninth house um, matters as well. Um, and I think that's all that I said on that point. And then yeah. um, Rin was speaking. I don't recall. Maybe it was about Ethereum. And, um, yeah, I was just about to say, seeing as we're already on the topic of of the new moon, and we we had some historical event occur, yet another one where the U.S. SEC approved the Ethereum ETF. Um, and Andrew, we were talking earlier about how you've seen some pretty cool things in in Ethereum's chart, and I pulled it up since you said it, and it does. There's some pretty funky things happening, so that's really cool. Yeah, it's um, pretty. Yeah, Ethereum's chart with the new moon coming into Ethereum's seventh house, and seventh house it has Gemini there. Um, the seventh house is traditionally rules partnerships or. In, in a natal person's chart, it's romantic partnerships or best friends, spouses. And so in the, with regards to business, when we look at business charts or an entity such as Ethereum, it's the seventh house is influences interactions and business relationships, contracts and negotiations. So to have this abundance of uh, planets in the seventh house speaks and Jupiter just entered the sign. So it's like widening this whole topic and Jupiter came in first to Gemini and then the sun and, and Venus moving in in time for the new moon. Um, it's, it's a very strong uh, bullish signal on greater chatter and communication with Ethereum. Uh, I, you know, we know, all know the news that have happened that has happened in the last few weeks and the SEC just, you know, whatever it is with paperwork, but some point this summer, it's expected that will there will be inflows into Ethereum with institutional money. When that happens, we saw what happens with Bith with, with Bitcoin. I think Ethereum it could even it could be even a, a stronger um, even stronger narrative around on sh blockchain because Ethereum is very on chain and it, it opens up a conversation around DeFi and earning a yield because people can stake their Ethereum, so institutions can stake their Ethereum and. So there's there's a lot more going on here with ETH, and it could be very interesting to see how the narrative shifts within the wider crypto market as as institutional money floods into Ethereum, and then uh, we could it could really be the catalyst to set off an alt season later in the year. Yeah, yeah, I think I think this is this news was huge um, because it just opens up now not just for all of these next new tokens or not new, but new tokens that will be 
turned into and accepted as other ETFs, but also it's just another addition to the the adoption to people just being like, oh, okay, now we accept it. Now it's it's as if like there's this little like mindset switch, like when the ETF and when the institutions start coming in, people are like, oh, okay, now it's like, okay for me to to get in. And so like, what, what else is on Ethereum? Because that's going to be accepted. I feel like there's a lot of talk of Solana ETFs or XRP ETFs eventually arriving too. Um, I feel like a link is another one that will be up and coming quite soon, seeing as they're doing a lot of uh, collabs with, with banks. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting times, like exciting times. Well, I think one of the most yeah. interesting things that came out of that as well is that it is, you know, um, with the approval of this ETF, it's actually labeled Ethereum as a commodity and not a security. And so mm. that, I, part, that is yeah. pretty good. The it way did. that these ETFs have been approved is so interesting. Like Bitcoins, they had that leak Twitter hack the day before. And this one, they were like delaying for six hours. You know, like it's always, you know, it, you can tell that there are things going on behind the scenes, these like negotiations, let's let's say, let's call them. But it, very interesting yeah. that Ethereum is um, has been labeled as a commodity. And so what does that mean for other um, other cryptocurrencies going forward? Um, I think it'll, it, it's very, very interesting and super exciting times. Like it's about time that we stepped out of the dark ages. Um, I did want to bring up, seeing as we're already talking about this as well, what's really interesting with um, the, the institutions in the U.S. that are going to be that are now about to provide the, the ETH ETF is that they're not giving their investors the ability or the profits of the staking. Mm. Um, but so they're just going to be staking themselves and taking the profits for themselves, question mark, which so I found I pretty interesting. But I wonder then Whereas for like the Hong lower management fees then, if they're offsetting that or it's just more profits for them. Yeah, I, I definitely don't know. It's it's just interesting that that came up. And more so, I, I saw it coming up because um, I started reading articles that people were like, well, if we understand crypto, if we understand all of this, then... Um, but this article that was saying that the staking of um, the Hong Kong ETFs of Ethereum, Ethereum ETFs instead will be paying out their investors. So people that understand crypto, uh, if they choose, I mean, if you really, really understand crypto personally, I don't think you'd be going through an ETF. You would just be taking it yourself and keeping it decentralized. But then on the other hand, they were like, well, if I do want to go into an ETF, I'm not really interested in a US Ethereum ETF. I'd rather go into Hong Kong. Ethereum ETF because I'll receive the the staking uh, rewards as well. So that's that was another just. I I, felt, I, think, I feel like well, the US well, is still trying to figure out their stance on staking. Yeah, I Go think ahead. what we'll see is I think what we'll see from that is it starts to get once they're approved, it then starts to get really competitive in terms of fees and um, you know trying to attract investors to their ETF um, versus another. So I think probably what will happen is initially none of them will give the staking rewards and then one of them will give the staking rewards and everyone will go to that and then they will all give yeah. their staking rewards. So yeah, so it's interesting. Or there'll be some kind of offset with the um, their management fees. Let's see how they go. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason yeah. why people really would go for an ETF rather than a rather than purchasing it themselves is that is the insurance side of things. That's you know, so if you are an institution and you're investing a lot of money or your family offers, then it's um it is insured. So I think that that's kind of like what is what is driving that. But um, yeah, but for personal self yeah. is obviously the way to go. Yeah, I do feel like I mean. In the future, I do feel like that's going to be another thing that DeFi will continue to work with. And I feel like there will be more and more 
insurance mm. possibilities and opportunities through through crypto. Um, but yeah, let's, let's. But it'll have to completely like that's change. change. Yeah, the insurance companies will be forced to like completely change their model if it's transparent yeah. and on the blockchain. I see it kind of like molding into more like a cooperative. So people sort of um, putting money, in, like a community, putting money into like a DAO, kind of like a pool. And so that if like, you know, a car accident happens, they can dip into that pool and they keep contributing, and which is kind of what insurance mm -hmm. companies are meant to be. But the lack of transparency in the current way it's set up, I don't know. Well, they'll be able to survive yeah. and transfer transfer over to blockchain but um yes we, we can wish and we can hope it'll I think it'll completely reinvent itself there's it's not that it's not going to exist at all it definitely is but I think it's another one of those industries similar to like um you know healthcare as well I think is going to be something that is going yeah. to be more of a community thing especially especially somewhere like the US, you know, like versus Australia or Europe, which have like, you know, healthcare systems, um, free healthcare, what have you, then the, you know, I think it'll be more of a like cooperative pooling together of resources. So it'd be really interesting to see how that all plays out too. Yeah. We are, we're at the beginning of, of it all, aren't we? Yeah, um, I think on that same day as well, something I wanted to draw attention to as well is that we've got Jupiter trying the Bitcoin's natal Mercury. And this is a really, again, leading into that communication, that chit chat, highly favorable aspect that signals a period of growth, optimism and positive developments for Bitcoin. So investors can expect smooth communication increase com confidence and potential for significant price increases. So I think that that's like sort of the more um, sort of positive side of this communication. Um, obviously, Jupiter, planet of expansion, abundance, good fortune, um, influencing growth and optimism and opportunity as it transits. It often brings positive changes, increased confidence and a sense of hope and possibility. So then we have like Jupiter, the planet of communication, intellect and commerce. It also really affects trading and decision making and the flow of information. So it represents, like in the natal chart, it represents how a personal entity processes information and communicates. And so mm. um, this trine is a harmonious aspect and facilitates like easy flow and cooperation between the two planetary energies. So it often brings opportunities, ease, and a natural like effortless boost to the areas that it touches. So for Bitcoin, again, like as we touched on before, just being in Gemini season even is like this Bitcoin related communication. Also remembering that Bitcoin is the blockchain is a transmitter of information like that really is what the blockchain what the blockchain is is that those transactions are packets of information being transmitted so transactions flowing more smoothly positive news possibly favorable regulations and increased public interest are likely so market sentiment just being more optimistic and hopefully leading to increased trading volumes but as you said corinne as well i sort of see more like between now, like when we're recording this on the 28th and the new moon, I see that's the more likely period to see all time highs. And then sort of like a little bit of a slowing down um, after the after the new moon, some st stability or stagnation. But I do see it as like pretty, you know, pretty positive still. And obviously we're long term bullish anyway, but we're looking at these sort of like micro aspects as well. Um, and I think yeah, one of the more interesting things that we've had just over these couple of weeks is the stepping up of politicians communicating about Bitcoin. And so RFK Jr. has always been pro-Bitcoin. He's been very, um, you know, outspoken about monetary freedom, monetary sovereignty. And this week we've had Donald Trump um stepping up and talking about Bitcoin and how he will protect Americans' rights to mm -hmm. hold Bitcoin and um, these sorts of things, which, you know, do I think these are uh, mm -hmm. vote grabs? Absolutely. 
um, because I I looked the other day and the statistic is like 45% of Americans hold um, crypto. So, I mean, that's huge mm. in terms of votes and um, yeah. about, and that's up 30% from in one year. So um, I think that that's pretty interesting. And so that's a lot of votes and a lot of people are very passionate about don't touch my crypto. So I, I think that that, yes, do I think that they, they are vote grabbing, but I think it's a vote grab in the right direction for crypto because um, as Andrew said, like crypto is being recognized as a community, as sort of a decentralized lobbying group, if you will. And um, so all of those 45% of Americans holding crypto are like mini lobbyists for for our Bitcoin bills. And um, so, yeah, I think that we're just going to see it's it's it feels like a turning point in the kind of communication if you think about last election it was very much about like i do remember donald trump being like i'll protect the dollar at all costs and you know bitcoin is a scam and you know i think um the democrats were also on the crypto is a scam bandwagon and so it's just nice to see the sentiment shift Whatever their intentions, their intentions are always for votes and always for power. I don't really believe that politicians do um, have our best intentions at heart. But as long as the, the crypto community is strong and is a force to be reckoned with, then we will be able to, you know, sort of maneuver that, um, you know, in a direction that we want to see. And again, like with this aspect, some favorable regulation coming coming this way. Hmm. I I feel like one as you were saying that about politicians I feel like definitely every American but also everybody around the world should read this book it's about 70 pages long it's called meet your strawman recommend hmm. everybody read that number two um so what I found so funny is that so um Trump had one of his, excuse my lack of understanding terminology in American politics, but he had one of his, uh, what are they called? The parties where they like raise money, right? In Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. And he had like one convention? where in one day. Oh no, the, again. Rallies, the rallies, that's what they're called, rallies. Probably. And I just know that on that day, and I looked it up to check. So he, in Palm Beach, he received $5 million in one day in crypto donations. And what I found hilarious that, I don't know if it was like 24, 48 hours after that, Biden tweets being like, this is ridiculous that Donald Trump was able to raise that much that quickly. And so now magically, they're also loving crypto and accepting crypto. And I was like, this is... This is high school all over again. Like this is just. But I, I think I'm here for is. the as a Leo. I love the drama. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it is like the macro is always a reflection of the micro, and I think that we, you know, I I don't know about you, but I I think about this a lot. Like I don't really feel any different to when I was a child. I'm still me. I've just grown. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like there's never really this turning point where I'm like, oh, right now I'm a grown up and I'm a different human being. And I think we can see that most reflected in politics, uh, the fighting between countries, the fighting between politicians. It just it feels like the way my brother and I fight. Like, you know what I mean? When we were kids, like how we thought when we were kids dirty is how we fought when we were kids, like really low blows, you know? Um, and so it, I think it always is an expression of, you know, the micro is the macro is always an expression of the micro. We're, we're, this is human beings we're yeah. dealing with. And um, so, yeah, but I thought that was interesting, too. I think that's also a little bit of why the um, the ETF was pushed through as well. Um, the Ethereum ETF, because, you know, the Biden administration want to be the you know look what happened under our watch bitcoin etfs you know ethereum etfs so it's all about these yeah um their brownie points right they sure yeah. are. 
even the fighting energy you're talking about, it's all this Mars and Aries conjunct Chiron and Aries right now in the sky. It's, it's all just like there's in, a, in an individual chart, it's much more about, uh, you know, vulnerability and uh, strength and vulnerability. Um, but it's our relationship to the masculine. And it's, so it looks like everything from expressing anger to going to war, to asserting ourselves and trusting our desires and our initiatives and so forth. And within the charts, um, we, we have in Bitcoin's chart that takes place in the 10th house of right career fame being seen. And then even in, in, in Ethereum's chart, it's also very strong, um, because it's touching upon Ethereum's natal Uranus, which is, and, and it squares, Mars is actually squared Ethereum's natal Mars right now, which also gives like a kick to, uh, mm -hmm. to like, what is this thing? And are we going after it? Are we doing enough? You know, then like they go and then they're like, wait, stop. We need more paperwork and da, da, da. You know, there's just like this back and forth tension going on within crypto of, and it and the more it's in the news, the more it's in the news. The more the politicians speak about it, the more the everyday people are like, "What is this thing? Why are they talking about this?" You know, and it becomes less um, out of even out of people who are out of touch or not tech savvy. They've heard of it, and they might you know people who have never heard only heard of Bitcoin. Maybe now they've heard of Bitcoin and Ethereum. You know, like so these this is how things start to happen. Um, and uh, like you were both saying that they're more ETFs are, you know, once these two come out and some time passes, it's likely that there will be more ETFs coming out for other um, blue chip crypto coins, which will bring even more liquidity into the market because the institutional money is that's that's huge. I mean, all the money that's in crypto is is very small compared to all, what all the money that's in the markets and equities. And so when that money turns into crypto, um, it generates a tremendous amount. And I think that a lot of people are just, you know, the Ethereum price running up 30% in anticipation of the inflows. People are just going to front run the the inflow money coming in because it's easy for them to make 15, 30% on their, on their money just for whatever that happens. So fun time to be in crypto. Um, we're also, you know, we're overdue for this bull, you know, we're in this bull cycle, but we're overdue for like the real, the, the run where the all coin season happens with, which will likely happen within the next 12 months, probably, you know, people are calling the next six, nine months or so. And when that happens, I think there'll be a flood of interest. People saying, oh, I made money, you know, my coin went up 5X and, yeah. and then there'll be even more intention um, into, into the whole market. And what, what is this technology and how does it serve humanity and what can we do with it and so forth? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that I kind of want to, I, I wasn't even going to cover it in this um, episode, actually, but it's just one of the things that you um, leaned into, I think as well, with this Gemini season, there is this potential for misinformation as well. And um, especially like overhyping things. There's nothing that pisses me off more than like seeing YouTubers and Twitter people over hyping tokens and so it's really important to bring some sort of clarity and some realism into the projections that you have when you're purchasing different coins um one of my pet peeves last one was that shiba inu to a dollar everywhere you're hearing shiba inu to a dollar and it was just like where are you getting this from? And this is literally people just repeating this. Like it's because yeah. we do need to be able to, look, this is crypto, crazy things happen. No one's denying that. Like out there things absolutely happen, but there has to be some reality. Like things don't just go up for no reason. They go up because money and value is coming into these projects. And so one of the tools that I use, I'll just share um, my screen. To be able to do that is um, a, a, just a very simple website called Market Cap of and um, marketcapof.com. And, and you can go on there and you can see, like, what would it actually take for my coin to go to these um, to these heights that people are saying that it could, right? So it's like, for example, my pet peeve of Shiba Inu last year, last season, sorry, was that there was no, there's no fiscal reality in that. Can it go to a dollar? Like, yes, 
in theory it could but is it likely to like that's what we always want to look at so you can use this website to just sort of keep some of those things in check my internet is really slow can you guys see that yep we can see it yeah, yeah. so for example you can use Shiba you know and have a look at what would it take to actually get it to a dollar. I feel you know, while while we're talking about this, this is really important to also like I feel like already this cycle or this time around, it is some other uh some other mean coins like Pepe and Bonk. Like yeah. yes, you can definitely speculate and you can profit out of these, like, but you also need to have an exit strategy and Shiba Inu to a dollar is not probably your best exit strategy. Exactly. Yeah. It's about keeping this in perspective. So it's not, it's not like saying like, what is possible? Anything is possible in crypto. Absolutely. Anything really is possible, but we're looking at more, is it probable? And so for example, the Shiba Inu to a dollar, um, if Shiba Inu, for example, you can use this website, market cap of, you can just put in Shiba Inu, what would the price be if it had the market cap of Bitcoin? So if it had the entire value of what is in Bitcoin, go into Shiba Inu right now, it would not even be one cent. So what amount of inflows would you need to see to get Shiba Inu to a dollar? Like all of the, like to, all of the market cap of gold, all of the market cap of silver. And so we can take a step back and go, is this possible? Yes, in theory, but is it likely? No, it's, I mean, in my opinion, it's not a bet that I would be taking. So I think that it is really important, especially this Gemini season, you're going to see tons of projections and saying, oh, well, this is going to, this is going to 10 X, this is going to five X. You want to see those things and say, why? Like, where are you getting that analysis from? How are you getting there? Because like, yes, it is possible. We see hundred X, thousand X on some of these low cap altcoins all the time, but you have to look at like, where is that money coming from? And um, that's gonna be pushing that to that projection. And then you can sort of stay a little bit more grounded and you're also not gonna stay in tokens that you shouldn't because you're gonna be like, oh, Shiba Inu is like, you know, only four zeros from one cent. <laughs> I'm holding on till it gets to a dollar. No, you're staying in that for a long time. Like if, if it, I mean, if it 10 X is, you're going to drop two of those zeros. That's really good. That's not even getting it to one cent, but like you're still getting 10 X return on that, or even taking three of those zeros off and getting a hundred X return is an amazing return in like, I don't, at where where else are you getting 100x returns? But keeping it in that perspective, mm -hmm. and I think that this last season really kept people in tokens for too long because they'd seen, well, this this YouTube influencer said it's going to a dollar. They're, they're not smarter than you, Bitcoin Zodiac family. They, uh, you know, some of them are just repeating what they've heard and you need to be able to do your own analysis to be able to, to give yourself some decent, um, you know, predictions and some some realistic predictions yeah i just um i have to get going a little bit early tonight so i'm gonna jump off but this is so fun and just want to say good night or good morning to have a good have a thank beautiful you. new moon peace love and bitcoin thank you so much uh, peace love take and care. bitcoin happy new moon talk bitcoin. soon thank take you. care bye see you bye yeah, no, those are those are such important and great points, Claire. Like, um, you know, I, I actually see that a lot. Um, and this is kind of like jumping ahead throughout this this next two weeks coming up, but June 10th with um in particular, I saw Neptune sextile natal mercury. Um, and I see like a lot starting to touch a Bitcoin's natal uh, natal Neptune as well during this time. I feel like it really is that energy. Like Neptune is 
uh, you know, Piscean energy. So it's very like dreamy and a word that I, I associate a lot with Neptune is illusion or delusion. And so when we have um, things playing into that, sometimes I really love to question myself, like, where's the illusion? What's going on behind this? Like, what is the narrative that maybe seems to be something on the surface, but actually in reality, when you go and come back from the dreamland, you're like, hold on, but how probable is this, right? We are dreamers. We do want to dream big or we want, and anything and everything is possible. Like Claire and I will be the first persons to be like, yes, like dream big, you can manifest. But also like to an extent, there are some things that we have to just be like, okay, but like, what is probable? So um, there's there's a lot playing out with the uh, with Neptune, and that's definitely that energy that energy behind that. So, and it comes around every crypto run. Like we we've barely even started in crypto this run, and we've already seen it so much. Like another thing that I always love to tell people to do as well is go and look at the holders of that crypto. So for example, you can go onto something like Etherscan, BSC scan, Solar scan. Seeing as we are on the blockchain, every single transaction, every single wallet is there and transparent for you to see. So if you actually I actually taught this not too long ago in one of my classes and I we looked at uh bunk if I'm not mistaken and like yeah. I think uh don't quote me on it but I think it was around 20 percent like it was a significant amount even if it was 10 percent of the total circulation of that token was in one wallet like that's that's a big red flag that could rug pull take that liquidity out of the market at any point and what happens majority of people that are in that all those other wallets lose significant amounts um of value in, in their wallets so it's it's very very it's risky I personally don't like to be involved with that I just think it's extremely high risk sure it could be high reward but personally I'm after the low risk high reward that's what I try and look more for um, and then, I mean, if you're leverage trading it, if you're just trying to leverage trade it, go for it. You're not buying into that crypto. Just make sure you put a stop loss and you're managing your risk accordingly there as well. So, yeah. And you're also yeah. holding for a short amount of time. And I think that that's, that's one of the things. Yes. And you're right, is this influence of Neptune. I have something about it later in one of the other transits, which we'll get to. But it is that kind of like yeah. illusion. And it's 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 a very similar energy to the oh I'm I'm out we're in a we're in a bear market I'm out of crypto entirely you know it's a, it's actually the yeah. other side of that energy and really what it is is it's just more about like educating yourself and just building that education you don't need to be a Wall Street guru to make money in this market you don't but you need to have the ability to dream big to hold a higher vision but also have the practicality to be like okay great how are we going to get there and see um and measure your risks um in in that way and measure your expectations yeah. in Way as well and leave room for a yeah. little unexpected magic like countries you know adopting bitcoin and all of those sorts of the crazy things that we see at this part of the you know adoption the evolution of of bitcoin and crypto and digital assets like that's what's so exciting but i think some people um exploit that possibility and exploit that excitement for views and likes and clicks and whatever and so we don't want anybody from the bitcoin zodiac getting caught up in that rubbish um you'll never no. hear and <laughs> and you will never see us do a thumbnail that's like 100x next coin <laughs> sorry all, right, all love sorry. to all the youtubers but that's just that's you're just not gonna get that from us and hey if that's your energy then then go for it but not from us sorry fam <laughs> not our jam it's not our jam we're trying to do something different oh and also on that but, note but you posted about this too, um, about scammers and replica accounts on Instagram and things like that. 
we will never DM you um, out of the blue. We will certainly never ask you for money. Um, you know, so please just make sure that you are following th at the Bitcoin Zodiac and we don't have any other accounts. So, um, yeah, just make sure you're safe in that as well. Yeah, great point. Also with our personal accounts, we, there's only one of them. The official Bitcoin Zodiac Instagram follows them. The TikTok follows them. And that's it. Please never send us crypto. We don't want crypto. I mean, no, we want crypto, but not your crypto. Yeah. You keep your crypto, please. We'll <laughs> never request from you. And yeah, if you do want to follow our personal accounts, you can go to at the Bitcoin Zodiac and we only follow um the bitcoin zodiac only follows those accounts and that's it so yeah we're doing our best to try and keep you guys safe in in this space but there are tons of scammers and i think the only way that we beat scammers is through education and elevating our education so yeah that's that's a little on neptune energies before we've even gotten yeah and and actually, so um, let's actually talk about June 7th. I know you've got some interesting aspects there. Actually, one that also is on this uh, natal Neptune theme. Um, I did look that, you know, there's there's Mars trine, the natal, ne uh, sorry, the Mars trine natal Pluto of Bitcoin. And also the moon is op opposition to the natal Pluto and moon square natal moon of Bitcoin. So just those already, I feel like set a little bit of a, a transformational tone, which follows on and flows through for what we were talking about with the new moon on the 6th. So it's just the day before. But I know you have um, some interesting transits that you see there. And what I love about, well, love, uh, what I see interesting that aligns with June 7th with these transits is that there is some pretty important red folders coming up. So um, they're all US related, which obviously affects Bitcoin if we're looking at BTC USD. Um, so it's got the US average house, uh, sorry, the average hourly earnings month, the US non-farm employment change and the US unemployment rate. And especially the unemployment rate tends to be like a, a pretty big one. And that's happening on the 7th uh, of June. So uh, how does that align with what you see with, with those transits there, Claire? Very much, very much. Non-farm payrolls is also is also a big one as well. And so I highly recommend that if you are trading, that you need to be keeping an eye on these dates because they are usually the times when market makers will use that as a turning point in the market. Um, and so mm -hmm. they, they are really important to know and to make note of. But on June 7th, we have Chiron Sextile, BTC's natal Neptune. And so that brings a period of healing, of innovation, heightened inf intuition into the Bitcoin market. So this, this aspect really sort of encourages investors to focus again on long-term visionary goals and also to be mindful of ethical considerations in their investments. Um, so Chiron, we've spoken about so much um, on the podcast because I really love Chiron energy. Um, it's this wounded healer energy. And um, when Chiron transits, it really brings opportunities for healing, for growth, and for understanding through facing and resolving past wounds. So um, I think that there is going to be a time within Bitcoin to sort of like address mistakes of the past or like um how do I put this you know there's times in in kind of growth times especially when it's like very early adoption very new that there you know maybe were bad habits that came in or bad practices or you know people that were, were just kind of crazy and bought large amounts of bitcoin but were maybe not um, aligned to Bitcoin's true purpose and true value. And I think that, that there's going to be a sort of healing period through those sorts of things, um, especially this like illusionary quality of Neptune, as Corinne spoke about just a minute ago. It's the planet of dreams, illusions, spirituality, 
Um, it influences intuition, creativity, and idealism as well. So in the natal chart, it represents this vision, visionary ideas, but also the potential for delusion or confusion if not grounded in reality. So interestingly enough, what I just spoke about using the Shiba Inu example is a, is a you know, um, perfect example of that. I didn't even know that I was getting to this, which is funny, but it leads perfectly into this. Um, so this potential yeah. delusion, which leads to confusion, and we need to be grounded in reality. We need to have these visionary ideas, but be able to be grounded in reality. So a sextile is really generally a harmonious aspect. It facilitates cooperation and positive opportunities between these two planetary energies. And it's often seen as a time of productive interaction, re representing opportunities for growth and beneficial outcomes. So for Bitcoin, the Chiron sextile Neptune really is a period of time where in the crypt, not just Bitcoin, but in the crypto market in general, really undergoes a healing process. So I think some of the stuff that like I was just talking about, all of these, you know, insane projections, someone just wants to get, um, you know, attention, clicks, likes, what have you. And so we're just throwing out these these projections without any basis in reality. I, I think we, we need to be done with that this season. And the only way to get rid of that is just to starve them of attention. So don't give it any attention. Do your own research and come up with your own projections of where you want to be. And also you need to do that because, you know, you're um, if you're a 20 year old that's investing in low cap altcoins, your um, time preference is going to be very different from a 70 year old investing in an ETF, Bitcoin ETF. So yeah. you, you think other people's projections is not really going to work for you. You need to take your own situation and be able to plan appropriately and accordingly. So, yeah, ne as I said, Neptune's influence encourages like this visionary thinking and innovative approaches, which we're all which is what Bitcoin is all about, what crypto is all about. Um, but investors and developers may introduce new creative solutions or improvements to Bitcoin's technologies and use cases. So I think when you're looking at that, I think interesting projects, things like Stacks, um, you know, other projects that are built on top of Bitcoin, they may be something um, to, to look at as well. Um, Lightning Network, developments in the Lightning Network, what's being built on improving on Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, heightened awareness of ethical and spiritual considerations as well, is that make sure these things that you're investing in are aligned with your, um, your heart, you know, your ethics, your values. Um, and I think that that's, I think there's going to be a growing emphasis on Bitcoin's potential for positive social impact, such as financial inclusion and decentralization of power. So um, this sextile is generally positive, but Neptune's influence can also lead to some confusion and idealization. So just remain cautious um, of overly optimistic projections and um or like misinformation that can come out and kind of cloud judgment so you know at this time in the market we will sort of see things that are like labeled oh the next bitcoin the next ethereum the next solana so just approach them with some re grounded reality i think and um yeah we are all looking for the next um solana we are all looking for the next ethereum of course but um, there's a lot of coins to go through to to find that. And so we just need to keep that balance, that perspective. Yeah. Yep. No, I love that. I, I feel like that really just aligns with what I also feel is coming. Um, I also saw like on, on literally the following day, and these are all just like days that are intertwining one with another, um, is that we then have some some resistance really being created with Venus square, the natal Saturn of, of Bitcoin. I really love looking at Saturn um, yeah. 
especially when we're looking for, you know, some sort of signs and days around potential price action. I do feel like if we haven't already seen it, uh, you know, June 6th, June 7th, June 8th really then goes and creates like, here's, here's the roof, like it's being created. Um, so just just resistance, constraints, uh, oh. and a big sign of like we need to adjust in the market. Um, so this, you know, is a really great time to maybe look at if you if you are looking at taking short term profits, maybe in those uh, more like you know your leverage trading side of things, um, or just preparing yourself for little pullbacks potentially little pullbacks um but i feel like this is really going and creating that that resistance that top um but it's it's good signs because we also have the um for example on the following day june 9th mars and this is on a macro level it's not just for bitcoin but we have mars shifting into taurus and this is i mean we just came out of taurus season we spoke a lot about taurus we love taurus and it's so good for the economy because especially economy and for crypto in particular during this time because i feel like taurus is such a cool we may have hit this resistance we may have hit this like top for now but let's reassess the market and our position so that we can create and prepare for long-term stability, long-term resilience. So mm. um, from June 9th is Mars coming into Taurus. And I love this because Mars is ruled by Aries. So as Andrew was touching on earlier, that Aries, that Mars energy is you know, uh, the energy, the drive, the action, assertiveness, competition, passion. And I do feel like with crypto, um, it does create like probably more volatility than expected. And I mean, with the news that we just had on June 7th, it just makes sense to have that. Um, but with it being in Taurus, it's this assertive energy creating this steady practical and resource focused nature um thanks to, to the Taurus right it brings a combination um and a shift from impulsive actions because Mars was just in Aries to a more deliberate grounded approach which if we tune into as Claire was just saying okay all this stuff is going to come up with Neptune but use that groundedness state that groundedness approach to uh tackle this uh, these various potential scenarios that may may came, come up um and again it's just really about the long-term investments and building a solid foundation instead of being in a time of impulsive trading um mars again as andrew was saying earlier like does stimulate conflict it is the planet of war but in Taurus these conflicts are likely to revolve around material resources values financial interests and I also feel like it's it's that that war that there is on who can get their hands on Bitcoin as much as possible like I feel like this is really the time that they want they want to shake uh, the average person out. They want to accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible. The supply is limited. So where are they going to get their Bitcoin from? Well, there's only so much being created every day. We've had the halving. The 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 amount that's being mined daily has been halved. So where else are they going to get more Bitcoin from? Seeing as they're buying up, institutions are buying up more Bitcoin daily than the amount of Bitcoin that is being mined daily. So where are they going to get it from? They're going to get it from people like you and me. So I feel like that's kind of the the Taurus, uh, the Mars in Taurus period that we're going to be going through. Um, but good for long term. Once again, if you look at it from the short term, it looks like, oh, no, like we're not smooth sailing to the upside. But this is really good for, for that long term. So, yeah. yeah. I think in the I think that's always the focus and I especially at this time in the market like we will we will shift our perspective at some point but we're not there yet and so what I sort of really want to communicate mm -hmm. 
the people that are listening is that even when we're talking about like altcoins and things like that, from my perspective, like, and especially with Bitcoin, like Bitcoin, I'm looking at the long term. Like I'm not even with Bitcoin, I'm not even looking at this cycle. Um, but with these altcoins, I'm looking at the cycle. So even though we're looking at these movements by the day and between each, you know, half moon, we're always look, we're looking at those, we're breaking those down. I'm not really looking at the at that short a time period. And so we do sort of like, I want to, you know, impress on you guys to have that sort of like longer time preference. Um, and yeah, when we're getting towards the end of the cycle, when we start seeing those signs, we will absolutely be shifting. Um, we're not going to be telling you to stay in, you know, in these coins for, for too long. Like I personally am out of yeah. every coin um, at the end, of, at the end of the bull run for sure. Um, but yeah. At this point in time, we're not there yet. So we're really still looking at that long term. We're looking at laying that foundation. And um, yeah, that's that's where we're at. So don't worry. We will yeah. we will shift gears when the time is right. Um, but but right now it's the more the planting seeds point of the cycle, in my we opinion. Are still planting seeds. I agree. I fully agree. And so if anybody is like brand new also to crypto and you're like this is the first time I'm even like getting involved in this space. Like you're a little late to the party, but there's still plenty of drinks and food to go around. So you're good. There's still time. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, June 10th, uh, we already talked a little bit of that Neptune sextile NATO Mercury. I feel like that um, really plays with, with that, um, Neptune and just being being planted be careful of that the the news and the the face youtubers so just be careful of that um June 10th there was another transit that um did you want to touch on that one Claire yes absolutely an important one with the midhaven I love midhaven yeah it's exciting yeah it's beautiful. Let's bring it up. Yeah, so we've got Jupiter semi-square, Bitcoin's natal midhaven. So this brings um, a time of increased visibility and public attention to Bitcoin, which again, totally aligns with Gemini season, totally aligns what we've been talking about with Mercury's influence as well. So coupled with optimism and potential for speculative behavior. So this is a minor challenging aspect. So it does suggest a little bit of friction that could affect Bitcoin's reputation and maybe lead to some short-term volatility. So um, but Jupiter's expansive growth, abundance, optimism, opportunity, positive energy, um, you know, that influence can lead to overconfidence possibly, possibly and excess and maybe excess risk taking if not managed properly. So the Midhaven represents this career you know, in a person, it represents career. Really for Bitcoin, we're looking at public image, reputation, and overall standing in the world. So um, for Bitcoin, the natal midhaven signifies its position and influence in the financial markets and its public perception. So the semi-square, as I said, is a minor challenging aspect, um, and it indicates a little bit of friction and tension, less intense than than a square for sure, but just maybe some minor obstacles or adjustments that require attention and effort to overcome. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to, again, it's going to be that focus. And I think, uh, again, we're, we're always going to see that, like we were talking about with that Neptune influence, like possibly misinformation. You know, we at the beginning, mm -hmm. following through our episode, at the beginning, we're talking about a lot of new eyes on Bitcoin. And then we're talking about this illusionary quality of Neptune, maybe leading to misinformation. And then we're coming to this, um, this semi-square aspect as well, which is sort of saying like, we need to be conscious of, how we're like when we're first learning about bitcoin it's a lot the um you know the the 
the the bridge to education there's a lot very much a lot at the beginning and then you kind of like reach this threshold where you're like oh actually this isn't as complicated as scary as foreign and uncomfortable and oh actually bitcoin is like transactions are way easier than like internet banking and so at the beginning it feels like a lot and in that time when people are just newly learning about bitcoin and crypto there is that opportunity for um, over hype, over excitement, over, um, you know, skipping over the details. Like you want to understand the foundational reason of why crypto, why are we here? This isn't just another yeah. asset to gamble on. So I think that there's that that's more what we're talking about here. And also there are a lot of people that don't want Bitcoin or cryptos to succeed. They are powerful people. Yeah. And um, so we may see some, you know, these kind of ridiculous headlines from 2015 that seem to pop up every cycle of Bitcoin's a scam, it's used for money laundering, funds terrorism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, nobody reports on how the dollar is used to fund scams and terrorism and money laundering, only focus on Bitcoin. So expect to see these kind of things. And for someone new to crypto, when you hear those headlines, you don't know that those have been happening since 2015 and debunked oh, a thousand times. There may be that potential to affect that public perception of Bitcoin. So I think that that's more what we're going to see. Again, the usual debunking that we do every cycle of um, some of the more ridiculous things about Bitcoin. So, um, yeah. yeah, but it can also cause a little bit of volatility in the market, too um yeah yeah I feel like that's like this whole period coming up like for example then we do have um on June 12th that again like I'm here looking at crypto craft and just the different red folders I mean this is a pretty big day June 12th right. um we have FOMC uh, we have economic projections, FOMC statement, FOMC press conference. We have federal, this is the U.S. federal funds rate. We have U.S. CPI for the year and U.S. CPI for the month and the U.S. core CPI for the month. So that's that's a lot happening in that day. And it beautifully aligns with our astrology. Um, we have both, well, there's actually a lot, not even both, more than both. So we have the sun, Mercury, and Venus that are squared the natal Saturn. So think about what we spoke earlier with natal Saturn. And the sun, Mercury and Venus are also squared the natal Uranus of Bitcoin and also the natal, oh no, the Sun, Mercury and Venus are trying the natal Neptune of Bitcoin. So this is a lot happening here and I feel like it's 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 funny because it's like a mix of like challenges and then you have the trine that's harmonious with Neptune but like Claire was saying sometimes when we even have a harmonious aspect mm -hmm. happening with Neptune Neptune still doesn't always then play out super favorable in terms of price um the squares to the natal Saturn and Uranus they indicate uh, again, potential, you know, as we have the statements coming out, maybe things in regards to regulation, to how they want to use Bitcoin or not use Bitcoin, maybe challenges, maybe structural challenges. That's very much also Saturn, like the structure and the challenges that may arise from that, as well as the possibility then, of course, of the market reacting from that, be very grounded in that Taurus energy, okay, um, for us traders and investors at the same time with the Trine and Neptune, this can just bring waves of different emotions, um, which I believe will just be played out from people probably reacting from the, the news that's coming up. Um, actually, just side note, have you seen there's this um, real TikTok going around and it's like, um, it's like Jerome Powell and he like walks up to the microphone and he's like, <clears throat> good morning. And then it's like a massive red candle. And then he like says like, so let's begin. And then it's like this massive green candle <laughs> and it's just like, but it's, it's funny, 
but it's so true like this man and now just affects the market so much but why well probably because institutions um or big money plays are taking advantage of the news and making certain moves but also because now you know people are expecting it and they get emotional etc cetera, etc cetera. so I feel like that's a lot of like the Neptune and just, um, I mean, on the positive side of things, it can be like enhancing perception, enhancing intuition, and also communication, which really can flow either way. So it could be favorable. Um, I, 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 I hope I'd like to look at, then maybe we might see some more like creative innovation and overall then optimistic sentiment. Um, I hope that things do come out that are positive towards maybe not just Bitcoin or Ethereum, but just maybe the overall crypto market or our economy as uh, as it stands. And I just I just don't feel like this is an easy transit. I feel like it's complex. I feel like there's I always go back to in the long term, especially when we look at the outer planets, this is transformative. This is positive long term for Bitcoin, but it's just going to come with uh, with challenges. So we got to make the most of the opportunities that come along from this. Remain adaptable during this time, um, and and just just be careful during this time because volatility is just the constant word. And Neptune. Let's blame it on t Neptune this time around. Well, I mean, even on that same day, um, well, it's mm -hmm. the 11th for me, actually, but 12th, 12th for America. Um, you know, we have Mars square Pluto. And so, again, this, this is more a macro perspective. It's not necessarily, you know, Bitcoin's aligning with trends on Bitcoin's natal chart. But this is what everybody's going to go through. So I just thought this one was quite interesting in terms of conflict because we've got Mars um, square Pluto bringing a period of like increased tension, volatility and potential power struggles. So um, as you mm -hmm. said as well, when you're looking, this also is like could mean sharp price fluctuations for Bitcoin, potential conflicts over regulation and market control. So I thought that was yeah. interesting. This is something the word market control i thought was just you know interesting because we had you know we just had this last week um that the congress has passed that the federal reserve cannot create a cbdc in america which is amazing news positive news because a it win. gives the well hold on a second <laughs> it gives um the federal Wait, reserve let me say my happiness <laughs> I mean, it is, no, it is, it is definitely positive because it gives the Federal Reserve way too much power, but it's like, it's protecting the government. It's, it's not, and yeah, it is, you know, some people have then been talking also about the, you know, the Federal Reserve, the, the government, the treasury may attempt to sort of like there are bills also being passed. There was one um, by Senator Massey. I think it was this week or the week before um and the fed now there have been many and the fed bills in the past um but this one was brought up and the reason that they've never really gained traction in the past is because there is this like unholy alliance between the u.s treasury and the federal reserve and they sort of like play this game uh -huh. with each other and have a very very beautiful close friendship um but a sort of like insidious yeah. friendship whereas um these kind of bills may take hold if the if the government is wanting to push that forward. And it doesn't mean there isn't a CBDC or something like that, a digital dollar coming to the US. It just may be a GB. Um, it, it may be a government um, digital currency. Yeah. Like so a GDC yeah. rather than a CBDC. Um, so instead of a central bank digital currency, it may be a government controlled currency. So mm. it still remains yeah. to be, we have no control over these things anyway. Um, so it's yeah. kind of better to just let them play out. But I think it is um, good that at least 
it does have to go through Congress if there was anything like that to be passed. And that sort of is um, something that America, like, has more than other. There's a bit more accountability there in America rather than mm -hmm. um, in other countries. I don't think there is as much accountability personally. But, I mean, look, in my opinion, also mm -hmm. the accountability in America is also bought and paid for. So is it really accountability? But um at least there are those processes there and there are power struggles within that right within the corruption but um so yeah, yeah this 100%. mars mars square pluto again you know pluto is this transformative power applied to technology innovation and collective movements so it really does bring radical changes and disruptions so the square is a challenging aspect it creates tension it creates conflict and the need for resolution. So on a macro level, um, there was also news this week that President Xi issued a warning and, you know, said that the U.S. better adhere to the one China policy, which includes Taiwan. Otherwise, there will be consequences. So we don't love this kind of talk, um, yeah. you know. We have enough conflict in the world. There's already horrendous things happening, innocent people's lives getting absolutely destroyed or taken entirely. So um, I think there is during that time, 11th, 12th, there is going to be a lot of tension. And invariably, that does have a knock on effect as well on the financial markets. And but I think out of these kind of challenging aspects where there is tension, there is conflict, you know, sometimes we need to have confrontation because we need to like hash yes. it out, we need to negotiate, we need to yes. sort of hash it out and out of that conflict on the other side of that tension, that conflict, there comes and, and this is where I think it's the Pluto influence is that innovation is that, tech, you know, innovation and technology and, you know, Bitcoin and crypto is a collective movement. So yeah, we, we are going to fight it out. We are, we are going to fight for this. And, um, you know, so yeah, we can see some power struggles, conflict happening within the financial sector, maybe disputes over regulations, security issues. And again, it's all about market control. That's all it is at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. While it's a challenging aspect, it also brings opportunities for profound transformation and innovation. So like advances in blockchain technology, significant changes in how Bitcoin is perceived could really has the potential to emerge in during this period as well. So, yeah. 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 And, you know, um, I, I believe you said it, but I'll just re-underline that that is a transit, like not specifically for Bitcoin. That's like on the macro. And then if we go into Bitcoin, even though it's a couple of days later, but, you know, it'll start to touch it prior to it on June 14th, you have then the moon that's square the natal Pluto of Bitcoin. And, you know, you, you used uh, very similar words to what, what I like had with the, this is emotional intensity, it's potential power struggles, it's profound transformations. It's not just, you know, death, but what is Pluto? It's death and rebirth. Like we like conflict, certain types of conflict, the productive conflicts that is like, okay, let's confront one another. Let's have conversations. Let's figure out where we need to go and what we need to improve to then get to the next level. And so that actually then is happening at the same time as the moon also being trine, so harmonious aspect, the natal Jupiter. And we love Jupiter. We love harmonious uh, aspects. And that brings um, a more positive sentiment to all of this for Bitcoin, for that transformation, once again, for that longevity. So this is a positive sentiment. It brings optimism, potential growth and expansion. So this, I don't feel like is going to be favorable to price, but I do feel like it's going to be increased market activity. So we're going to have more, you know, Gemini season, just more people here, more people involved, more uh, transactions occurring, more buys and sells. So in the long run, once again, this is just like preparing for continuous adoption and expansion of, of Bitcoin. So, um, that's, uh, that just aligns with, with that energy specifically then, then to, to Bitcoin 
and um, that day as well, there's the transiting Jupiter, which is sextile, the Bitcoin's natal moon. So um, Jupiter, again, would you like to touch on that one? Yeah, I mean, again, I think that that is a positive, um, again, yeah. is a positive aspect, like it's a harmonious mm -hmm. aspect for sure. So it's a, it's a, it's bringing in, and I think it just is like very sort of symbolic. The flow of this episode is that we've come through this conflict, and then we're coming back into a period of positive market sentiment, which again is increased mm -hmm. investment opportunities, and it's more like emotional stability among investors. Like there's a, there's a sense of that there because we're looking at like the moon is always this emotional body. And so this aspect creates these like favorable conditions for Bitcoin's growth, potentially leading to some new milestones. So that's not necessarily like milestones in the price, like possibly. Um, but I also think like you, this is maybe a time where we're going to see um, maybe some announcements around like, oh, a country, another country is adopting Bitcoin or um, a, yeah. a country is like adopting micro strategies strategy um you know like a big publicly listed company something like that i think and um again it's just that confirmation of like they're seeing what i'm seeing they're seeing the future that i see for bitcoin and it's just like confirmation and confidence and it like eases our emotions um and i i think i can see that for that period of time so but i i agree with you as well i think that it's like a crunchy time um mid-month and then we sort of like come out of that a little bit more favorable um and then but i think you know towards towards later in the month as well we've, we've got some other things that um i want to touch on do you have anything else after that one yeah, so um, we've got June 15th that we have Mercury and Venus that are in opposition to the natal Pluto. And at the same time, Mercury and Venus are trying the natal Venus. So there it is. Once again, you've got beautiful, harmonious, but transformation and death and rebirth occurring with the, with Pluto. So um, this indicates, once again, it's power struggles, intense communications, uh, revelation of hidden information as well with Mercury and that uh, challenging aspect with with Pluto. Something might come out. These dynamics might lead to significant market movements and require, of course, careful management from our end. Um, then the trine between Mercury and Venus with the natal Venus um, is that more positive sentiment and also like a lot of people being attracted to Bitcoin. Venus is very big on, on attraction. Um, so with that positive, um, with that positive transit, it's just uh more people flowing in into Bitcoin. And it's also beneficial for for partnerships. So I feel like this is like, like you just said, it's partnerships as in like countries accepting more Bitcoin. That's the type of partnerships that I see I see happening. And on June 17th, so just a couple of days after that, I think it's really important that we touch on Venus going into Cancer and Mercury going into Cancer. I love Cancer. Obviously, I'm a little biased here because the love of my life is Cancer, but I love Cancer energy because I, I, I feel sorry for them because every time I see Cancer, ener uh, cancer memes, they're like, oh, it's the cry baby. And I'm like, no, like... <laughs> haven't you noticed every time it's like oh like even Alex is like why are we always sad like why do they always make cancer sad but if anything I actually feel like cancer energy is it's so beautiful it holds such a beautiful space for for people um it's actually it, it's it's the ocean like it, it has so much energy because it's a water sign like it just has so many different aspects of it, but we'll talk more about that in, in cancer season, but specifically with Venus and Mercury trans Venus and Mercury transiting into cancer. I feel like it's um an energy in particular around yes, communication with Mercury, relationships with Venus, 
And um, actually, let me just kind of go through one by one. So starting with the Venus in Cancer, this is like a nurturing, protective energy to financial matters. So for us, as we have these macro transits, it's like for us being like, okay, once again, um, I want to be more cautious. I want to be careful of my emotional driven uh, decision making around this. I want to prioritize security. I want to prioritize long term stability instead of these speculative gains. So your financial decisions I actually feel like during this time as well, it could be a little bit of like that using your gut feeling as well. Like, yes, use your technicals, use your fundamental, but sometimes it is like that, that emotion, that sentimental of like that gut that you're like, mm, I feel like this, you know, might be a good time uh, for whatever that may be. Um, and really checking into projects that align with your beliefs and your values um, because I feel like that's a very big cancer energy and with Venus uh, you know just really thinking about where am I putting my money money is energy so where am I putting my energy I want to put it into something that I love that I care about and then I'm going to be able to keep my energy secure for the long time um, and then with the mercury in cancer this is uh, Again, that intuitive emotional communication. And this is where you might go more of that gut feeling when you're making certain decisions. Of course, back it with, with several um, analyses. Um, and also like importance around information, security, and privacy. So during this time, maybe we'll see something re come up as well uh, with with privacy coins, maybe question marks around the privacy and the security of particular crypto or crypto market as a whole, as all of this news and Gemini chatter is is coming out. So overall, with Mercury and Cancer coming into, sorry, Mercury and Venus coming into Cancer, I do feel like it's, it's, it's just another prepare your foundation for the long term and shift your energy into aka your your money, your investments, no financial advice. But what I would do following the planets is shift it into what do I really believe in 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 the long term? So and what just aligns with your values? Um, cancer cares so much about like the home and protectiveness. Um, mm. So just really play into that when you're looking at where you're at with your portfolio and your choices during this time. Yeah, it's a very nurturing energy. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think that's why like women are maybe, you know, it's quite well known that like women are better traders than men, actually. And I think it's because we bring that like nurturing energy. So we're more looking at like taking care of the capital. Whereas like men are much more like go out and kill and, you know, <laughs> risk it all. All in. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's very different, like feminine, masculine energy. And I think um, uh, you know, obviously, yeah. during, you know, cancer placements, it's time to like, you know, lean in, whether you're masculine or feminine in gender, we all have these masculine, feminine energies within us. And so it's more learning to lean into those like nurturing, like now's maybe a time to look at capital preservation more than huge risk taking, right? So um, I yeah. think that's quite interesting too. Um, the I next one I have is, is on June the 18th, we've got Saturn conjunct Bitcoin's natal Uranus. So I'll just go over this one like really quickly. Um, yeah represents like a kind of a time for balancing that innovation with structure and stability so we need to kind of like be aware of that and like I'm always talking about like healthy market structure and so we want to make sure that that that's what we're seeing and so this could be, be this aspect can bring like maybe increased regulation um, and sort of potential market volatility, but also opportunities for significant technological advancement. So it's a conjunction is a powerful aspect where two planets are in close proximity, blending their energies, and it can amplify both the positive and the challenging traits of the, the planets involved. 
So, um, yeah, I think that this is like, despite the potential challenges of this aspect, it also can bring significant technological advancements and improvements. So again, all eyes on sort of the projects that are, you know, in crypto that are building infrastructure. Um, Andrew talks a lot about yeah. this, a lot at those, and also the infrastructure, Bitcoin infrastructure. So the infrastructure of Bitcoin, what's being built on top of Bitcoin, um, you know, where is Bitcoin being accepted? Is that growing as well? Um, so there, there is a lot of opportunity for advancements and improvements in that order. And so Bitcoin could see upgrades and innovations that enhance security, scalability and usability during this transit. Yeah, I um the following days after that, and as we approach that full moon in Capricorn, I I also I just I see a lot of challenges. I don't see super harmonious transits. Um, you know, in particular, I have um Neptune square the sun, and that's on a macro level. So there we are again with with Neptune and the sun. So where is our attention uh, during this time? Yeah. Um, but, you know, on the positive side, it is like very visionary. It's again, long term, be creative, get into that, that fun, like manifesting, what do I, visualization of the future. Um, but when we come to looking at like trading, investing, I think it can even be like a little like burst of some bubbles during this time i think that's really important to just be realistic be realistic um and don't don't get caught up in particular for bitcoin the sun's opposition the needle pluto so once again there we are with pluto it's it's that transformation uh, maybe sudden market corrections revelations hidden issues that come to light uh, that may create what seems like a significant shift, but a, sh a short-term shift, um, which could just move uh, move price in maybe not as desirable directions during this time. It doesn't look super, super positive, but um, that's all on the short term. Because once again, when we zoom out and we look at those external uh, outer planets, everything looks like it's aligning perfectly for crypto. It's just, and you know, sometimes we sound like a broken record, but we're going from a new moon to a full moon. We're probably going down. <laughs> like, exactly. just moon phases. Yeah, the most basic aspects of financial astrology. I'm seeing that as well. And I look, also, it's not, it's not bad. Like, it, it's not bad. I think one of the oh. things is, the theme of this episode is really like dream big but like let's bring some reality to the scene as well so like on the 19th we've got um jupiter quincux bitcoins um natal mars as well and so this is like where adjustments and balance is a key to navigating the financial markets effectively. So I can see this as being a like rebalancing time. This is being a time, again, we're clearing out the greed in the market where we, we need to do this to grow. Like we need to prune to grow. And this is sort of like the theme that I'm feeling through this, this period towards the end of the month and um, or towards coming into the full moon. So it, this aspect yeah. suggests to align aggressive trade, align to aggressive trading, um, drives the like expansive opportunities created by Jupiter, but like managing the risk of over expansion. So it's like you've got this expansion coming from Jupiter. Yeah. But Mars going, hang on a second, we need to like rebalance it. And it's just like the way that the markets go as well, because it's like they're always, um, you know, we expand a bit and then we have a bit of a retracement, then we expand some more, have a bit of a retracement. It's not ever up only and we wouldn't want it to be either. So a quincunx also ind yeah. like indicates the need to reconcile conflicting energies make us necessary adjustments to achieve balance. So that's really what it is. It's like a rebalancing energy. Um, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. So 
balancing aggression with optimism. So there may be some tension between the aggressive trading, like the aggressiveness of Mars and this, you know, optimistic, expansive opportunities of Jupiter. So finding a balance between a cautious action plan that's planning for the future, um, you know, and the optimistic growth, like is really crucial for this period. So um, despite mm -hmm. the tension, aspect can bring significant opportunities for growth you know if the adjustments are made wisely and that's what I sort of want to say is that like even when we say oh well we could be seeing a down period we don't see this as a negative thing we see this as an opportunity to prepare for the future to plant seeds prepare for the future and maybe take some buying opportunities that are there so it's never negative we're long-term oh, yeah. For bullish for bitcoin and crypto and um we just really think that we're in this like process of like we have seen some amazing expansion since we started this podcast we've seen bitcoin go from 15k to 70k to over 70k so i don't know any other market that you're seeing this kind of expansion good luck to you but um maybe nvidia that's it um so you, you know <laughs> yeah. It, it's not that we haven't seen expansion this year. It's just that, that we're actually growing, I think, in a really, really healthy way. And um, and it's, you know, giving us plenty of opportunities. We need to take those opportunities because they don't last forever. Um, so, yeah, so that's we see this as positive, even though it sounds a little bit like. Boo -hoo. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's always the coming back to let's make sure that we're not associating our emotions, our decisions based on current price. Um, that's yeah. why I, I do love the macro. I love the zooming out. I love looking at the astrology. I love looking at the outer planets because they just paint this the clearer picture over, over the long term. Now, as we always say on here, we do not use astrology to predict the future, but it does create a blueprint. And that blueprint, I I, I don't see, kind of like Doctor Strange, like I don't see an outcome where crypto doesn't fit the narrative. Like it doesn't fit the timeline. Like one of the, all the timelines, all the possibilities have crypto in there. Um, it's just in the short term, we we have those ups and downs. So, and yeah. uh that's, I mean, that's a beautiful duality as well. That's represented by, by Gemini and <laughs> Gemini season, the, the two sides of it. Always, always the two things can be true at once energy. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it is, yes. we, I think it is important also to look how far we've come and I'm not talking just in terms of price. I mean, if you had thought four years ago that you'd have Donald Trump standing on stage saying, I'm going to protect your right to hold Bitcoin. I mean, this just missed. <laughs> so the fact that the way that Bitcoin and crypto is spoken about in the collective consciousness compared to just a couple of years ago, I mean, it's really crazy. The moves, the, the, the gains that have been made even just in perception and acceptance and adoption in such a short period of time. What usually would take decades is only taking years. And so it's so exciting to see. And I think it's really important to, to keep that in mind because we kind of take for granted, you know, and we're like looking at the, like the negative, the next hurdle, the next hurdle, the next hurdle. And we fail to look back and go, hang on a second, four years ago, I would have thought you were crazy to say that that would be a reality. So, yeah. 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 I feel like <laughs> I just laugh because the majority of what I hear or see, especially like out in on social media is how like, it's been forever since the all time high, like where is crypto going? And then I look and I'm like, it's been 75 days. Yeah. Like, relax. Like, like, it's okay. Like, uh, just go back to, what was it? The start of 2023 when Bitcoin yeah. was $15,000. Yeah. And look at right. today. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. But I think, well, yeah. That was a lot, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. 
I hope that many of you are enjoying um, TBZ GPT. If you have not had a chance to look at it yet, check down below because we'll have that all down there so you guys can get access to that. Um, I know I've been having fun with it and, and learning myself from, from chatting <laughs> to our own brains, which is kind of cool. Oh, it is kind of crazy because there's sometimes that I look at it, I type something in and I mean, this GPT has, is based on the data sets are from us. And sometimes I ask it a question and I'm like, wow, you answered it so much better than I would have <laughs> in so much more detail than I would have. So it's quite crazy. Um, you know, just adding yeah. like G AI is, is coming for us, is coming for our jobs, Corinne. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 they they will they will never match I'm sorry AI while you're listening but you'll never match our our fun personalities and our uh, our sentiment and our creativity and our, our souls what makes humans humans totally totally yeah so it's good well I hope that you guys are all enjoying that have a beautiful new moon set those intentions um under this like amazing gemini energy don't forget to sometimes pause and get out of your head and get into your heart and um with that peace love and bitcoin happy new moon in gemini and uh cacao ceremonies with the tbz coming soon <laughs> peace love and bitcoin love and bitcoin